our head and give praise to him for he is great. Go ahead and celebrate the greatness of God this morning. Lift up your voices unto him. Declare that he is great. Both in heaven and on the earth. He is great in your lives. He is great in your home. He is great in your business. He is great. From eternity to eternity he is great. Say to him, there is none like unto him. There is none that can be compared to our God. He is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be adored. He is worthy to be glorified. The Lord God Almighty is his name. Let's magnify him this morning. Let's exhort him this morning. Worship him from the depth of your heart. Say something good to him this morning. Say something nice to your creator. He's worthy. He need no man to be the God that he is. He is the creator of the heavens and of the earth. From eternity to eternity, he's God. The God who sits in the heaven and rules over the affairs of men. He draws the earth like cotton. He sits up there and his feet touches the earth. He is the almighty God. He is the all-knowing God. Glorify him this morning. Magnify him this morning. Celebrate him this morning. Worthy, worthy, worthy are you, Lord. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Before the earth, you have been. When the earth passes away, you will forever remain God. We glorify you this morning. We exalt you this morning. Thank you, Abba Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Whatever God wants to accomplish... He sends his word to accomplish it. When God gives instruction, it is our own responsibility to obey. Somebody said that the death of a deaf man can be hushed in his presence. Why? Because he does not hear. I want you to pray to God this morning that throughout this year 2022 as instructions will be coming from various quarters and most importantly from God that God should grant you a listening ear and the heart that carries out God's instruction. Brethren, there is nothing as fighting a battle that God has won already. But for you to fight a battle God has won, you need to hear from him. Let's lift up our voices to God this morning. That as the word of God comes to us this year, we will not only hear the grace to do that God should grant unto us. Brethren, are we praying? Lift up your voices to God this morning and pray to God. As you hear the word of God this year, you will understand. As you hear the word of God this year, you will understand. You will do the grace to do. Lord, release upon your church. The Bible says, let him that hear, hears what the spirit of God is saying. As your spirit moves in the assembly of your people this year, 
Grant us understanding, the power of understanding. Let it rest upon the church. The grace to do your will, the grace to carry out your instruction. Let it rest upon the church. This is a cry this morning, Lord. Let the power of understanding rest upon us. The willingness to do your will, let it come upon us. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, everlasting Father. Glory and honor be unto your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. One of the prophecies of God to us through our Father and the Lord at the twilight of last year is that the siege is over. I want us to pray this morning. Everyone that you know, everyone that is related to you, everyone that is under this roof, everyone that is watching this program or listening online or wherever they may be, that is under one siege or the other, as the word of God goes forth this morning, let there be liberation. Shall we raise our voices to God and pray this morning? Raise your voice to God every form of siege. Siege of affliction, siege of sickness, siege of lack. Every siege, king of glory, that your people may be going through. You have said to us through your son that the siege is over. Let the seed be over in our homes. Let the seed be over in our lives. Let everyone that is, that is experiencing one seed or the other this morning receive liberation in the name that is above all names. We pray for freedom, 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 freedom. We pray for liberty for everyone that may be under one seed or the other this morning in the name that is above all names. Thank you, everlasting Father. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. It is easy to serve God when, when, you, when you have what it takes to serve him. And one thing I know that is uppermost is health. When you have health, you will not find it difficult to serve God. You're going to pray for yourself. That everything you need to serve God, the health I need to serve God, the wealth I need to serve God, the strength I need to serve God, the grace that I need to serve God, in year 2022, you will never lack any. Go ahead and pray to God this morning. Father, everything that I need to serve you in year 2022, grant unto me, Lord. I personally ask this morning, my Father, everything that I need to serve you, grant me, my Lord and my God, in the name of Jesus Christ. The courage that I need to serve you, Lord God. Grant unto me, my Lord and my Father. The comfort that I need to serve you. The sound head that I need to serve you. The peace that I need to serve you. Grant unto me, King of glory. Peace in our homes. Peace in our businesses. Peace in our ministry. Peace in the church of God. Everything that I need to serve you. Lord, grant unto me. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you everlasting Father. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus mighty name we have prayed. Finally we are going to pray for our pastors. We are also going to pray for our father and the Lord. The general overseer and mommy Gio. As he requested last Sunday. We have agreed with him. That at least we we'll spend at least one minute. To remember him in prayers. Let's lift up our voices as we pray for the general overseer. Remember also your pastor this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ, let's pray for new grace. Let's pray for new anointing. Let's pray the Lord God Almighty will grant us strength in the mighty name of Jesus in everything that we do. Pray that success will be the end result in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever we lay our hands upon in this new year, Father, we pray that it will prosper it. We pray for that the Jew and mommy Jew and all their lieutenants. We pray, Lord God, that you will encourage them the more. You will empower them the more. You will anoint them the more. You will engrace them the more in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, ancient of days. 
When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he has done for me, my very soul shall shout hallelujah. When I think and the ending. We glorify your holy name this morning. We thank you for the gifts of a new year. We thank you for the gifts of a new month. We thank you for the gift of a new week. We thank you for the gift of a new day. Thank you for being mindful of us. Thank you for your kindness at all times. Blessed be your holy Mawaridima. We are gathered here this morning, Lord, to say thank you to you for what you have done, for what you are doing, for that which you will yet do. Please be exalted. Thank you for everything that happened here last year. Thank you for souls won. Thank you for testimonies shared. Thank you for offerings given. Thank you for blessings that you gave to us. Blessed be thy holy name. Father, this morning, speak to us. We particularly ask for the attitude that brings about high altitude release unto each and every one of us. We also request that where we need to make adjustments, help us to make adjustments. In this new year, open a new chapter. Give us new health, new wealth, new testimonies, new blessings in the name of Jesus Christ. We particularly pray, Lord God, Father, for every member of this church. We will not fight any battle on our own. But every battle that come on our way will be the battle you have fought already in the name of Jesus Christ. You have never lost any war before. My Lord and my Father, this year there shall be no victim. This year, there shall be winners. This year, there shall be victors. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Glory and honor be unto your holy name. Glory and honor be unto your holy name. Glory and honor be unto your holy name. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Praise the Lord. 
wave to somebody this morning, maybe not seeing the fellow this year, just wave to him or her and say, Happy New Year to him or her. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. We are all welcome to church this morning. And for those that may be seeing us for the first time or we are seeing for the first time, we say Happy New Year to you all. And as our Father in Lord has declared, this is the year of triple doubles. I said, this is the year of triple doubles in Jesus' mighty name. So we welcome every one of us to church this morning. We'll be looking together at what I have titled, Attitude for High Altitude. Attitudes for High Altitude. I'll be taking a reading from the book of Mark, chapter 2. The book of Mark, chapter 2, I read from verse 21 and stop at verse 22. Mark, chapter 2, 21 and 22. No one sows a patch of unstrunken goods on an old garment. If he does, the patch tears away from it, the new from the old, and the rent becomes bigger and worse than it was before. Verse 22. No one puts new wine into old wine skins. If he does, the wine will burst the skins and the wine is lost and the bottles destroyed. The new wine is to be put in new wine skins. Hallelujah. The topic once again says attitude for high altitude. What is an attitude? An attitude is a feeling or a way of thinking that affects a person's behavior. The way you think, the way you feel that makes you to behave the way you behave is known as your attitude. An attitude is a settled way of thinking or feeling about something. Attitude is the eye of your souls. You only can see the eyes of your souls. So your attitude determines how you see life. How you view life. It is your attitude that determines it. Little wonder you get to the bus station or a train station. You are the only one there. And the train comes. The doors are open. You rushed as if there were 10 people competing for the entrance. It is the attitude. The way you see life, the way the eyes of your soul sees life that makes one to behave that way. In some quarters, attitude is defined as uncooperative behavior. We often hear that, oh, the only question I ask him is that, why did you come late? And he gave me what? An attitude. Praise God. So an attitude is also an uncooperative behavior. Then if it determines your altitude, then what is altitude? Altitude simply means heights. In a very simple way or in simplest form. Heights. It means elevation. 
particularly from the ground level or the earth level or the sea level. Your height, your, your, your altitude in this context is the height of your desire in this new year. The height of your desire, the height that I want to attain, the height of my desire in year 2022. But what determines it is our attitude. I think for about um, three weeks or more, one of our pastors taught on attitude during the Gindi. The reality is that prophecies have gone forth right from the end of last year. We have listened to various prophecies. We have had various prophecies. We have even prayed for ourselves as prophets. The first assignment that was given to every individual on the 1st of January when we had crossover night on 31st of December till 1st of January was that you should prophesy to yourself. So prophecies have gone forth. If you have forgotten all prophecies, you won't forget the one you made to yourself. Praise God. But the truth is that if we fold our hands, God forbid, if we go to bed to sleep without doing anything about the prophecies, come the 31st of December, the prophecies still remain as prophecies. May it not be so for you and I. In Jesus' mighty name. In the book of 1 Kings, chapter 18, at the beginning of that chapter, God instructed Elijah. He said, go and tell Ahab that things will change. It's about to rain. It was a serious season of drought in Samaria. In verse 41, verses 41, 42, and 44, Elijah engaged Ahab, having declared that there is a sound, there was a sound of abundance of rain. Elijah did not go to sleep. The first thing he did was to run to the mountain. And the Bible said he prayed. And he did not only pray, he only sent the servant. He said, go and see the cloud. Go and check the cloud for me. The servant came back the first time. He said, he's not seen anything. He said, go back again. He went seven times. At the seventh time, he said, I can see something that looks like the hand. He also gave instruction to Ahab. Ahab also did not sit down. Every instruction given to him was carried out for the prophecy to come to pass. So there is a role you need to play. There is a role I need to play for these prophecies to be fulfilled. Having said that, we also need to realize that there are attitudes and there are attitudes. There are attitudes that will make people to embrace you. There are attitudes that will make people to refrain from embracing you. There are attitudes that will create friends for you. There are attitudes that will create enemies for you. There are attitudes that will create helpers for you. There are attitudes also that will take helpers away from you. But I pray for you and myself this morning, like the first preacher said in the morning, that each time he preached, he also preached to himself. So I pray for you and I also pray for myself. That the attitude that will bring help our way, God will give to us this morning. In Jesus' mighty name. So numerous, but I'm going to share just seven with you. And I'll be brief, as be as brief as possible. The first attitude is the attitude of preparedness. The attitude of a prepared mind. Even when there are no physical evidences to show that certain things will happen. As a child of God, whatever you do as a professional, be prepared. In 2 Kings chapter 3, verse 17, God said there that we may not see the rain, we may not see the wind, but our valley 
shall be filled. So how the rain will fall, how the wind will blow, is none of your business. It's none of my business. All you need to do is prepare for it. Genesis chapter 41, verse 14. Genesis 41, verse 14. The story of Joseph is a story we are familiar with. He was taken to jail, you know, for the offense that he did not commit. But right inside there, there were two servants of the king. They were also imprisoned. They had two dreams, one each. Then he interpreted the dreams for them. For one he said he will be restored. For another he said he will not be restored. For the one that he said to that he will be restored, he was actually restored, but he said to him, when you get to the palace, please remember me. For two years, nobody remembered Joseph. But he was not dejected. He was not discouraged. But suddenly, there was another occasion that Pharaoh himself had a dream that nobody could interpret, even the, the sorcerers and the magicians of this world failed in interpreting it. And suddenly, the cup bearer remembered that, oh, there was a man I met two years ago. Now I have known my foolishness. And Pharaoh said, instantly, go and fetch him. Let's look at verse 14 together. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph. And they brought him how? Hastily. In other words, there is no time. The king needs you. But indeed, he said, the Bible said, but Joseph first did what? Shaved himself to look like a normal human being. He changed his clothes to look like a normal human being and not like a prisoner and made himself what? Presentable. Then he came into Pharaoh's presence. Praise God. Prophecies have gone forth. How prepared are you? How prepared am I? Hallelujah. It's a fresh start. He dropped what he was to become what God wants him to be. You need to drop what you were in 2021 to become what? What God wants you to be. Be prepared for opportunities. Opportunities will come. I think about two years ago, one of our sisters called, I can't remember the day of the week now, and he said, Pastor, I'll be traveling tomorrow. And I said, to where? He said, I'll be going to the U.S. Uh -uh. I mean, if somebody wants to go to the U.S., you don't just wake up and carry your bag and say you are going to the U.S. I said, well, I didn't prepare for it. I didn't plan for it, so to speak. But in my office, some people were meant to go to the U.S. only to find out that one of them had no visa. The second one had no valid passport. So the next question is, who has a valid passport and a valid visa? She was available. She was prepared. Praise God. Oh, she was prepared. There are some of us that are carrying passports that have expired in 2019. All you are still saying is that because of COVID, because of COVID, be prepared. Praise God. Do what? Be prepared. Maybe you have written applications, you have attended interviews severally, and nothing is coming for that. Your CV is still carrying 2019 date. The last time you updated it was 2019. Be prepared. There are opportunities that will be coming our ways this year as businessmen, as businesswomen. Be what? Be prepared. Number two, attitude. Have the attitude of a visionary person. A visionary person. Somebody who has a vision. Your vision is the pictorial illustration or imagination of where you want to be or what you want to accomplish over a period of time. The question this morning is, where do you want to be in the next six months? In that your little business, that thing you call little, where do you want to be in the next three months? The first picture told us about assessing ourselves. In the next three months, when you assess yourself, what will be your report? The first thing God said to, Genesis, uh, to Abraham, in Genesis chapter 13, verse 14, 
He said, lift up your eyes. Can you please give us on the screen? The Lord said to Abraham, after Lot had left him, somebody here this morning, God, Lot is going to leave you. Oh, I said, Lot is going to leave you. Everything hindering your vision will leave you. In the name of Jesus Christ. After Lot had left him, God said to him, lift up now your eyes. And he went further and look from the place where you are. Look northward. Look southward. Look eastward. Look westward. And they said, whatever you see, I will give to you. Say, for the land which you see, I will give to you and to your posterity forever. Physically, Father Abraham was not seen in Nigeria. Physically, he was not seen in America. Physically, he was not seen in Asia. Where he was, inwardly, he saw the entire world. Today, there are sons and daughters of Abraham all over the world. Praise God. So the question this morning is that, what are you seeing? We have started a new year. What do you want to become in the next few months? What will your position be when we gather again to shout Happy New Year? It's a new dawn. A new dawn is when day breaks. When the day breaks, you see clearer and farther. When the day breaks, you see what others are not seeing. And when you see what others are not seeing, you also hear what others are not hear. They are not hearing. I pray for somebody here this morning that in this new year you will see what others are not seeing. In this new year you will hear what others are not hearing. Even the little voice, the whispering, like that is said on Friday, we will begin to hear it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The third attitude is the attitude of gratitude. The attitude of gratitude. Gratitude is the outward expression of thankfulness. Is an indication that you are thankful. Gratitude makes sense of our past. No matter how rough the past was. No matter how tough year 2021 was. Gratitude makes sense out of it. It also brings peace to today. It makes sense out of the past. It brings peace to today and creates a vision for tomorrow. Gratitude makes us to be conscious of the benefits that we have received in time past. Show me a man that is always grumbling. I will show you a man that is not grateful. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 15. Hebrews 13 15 says, Through him, therefore, let us constantly, how? How? Let us do what? Constantly. I said how? Constantly and at all times offer up to God a sacrifice of praise which is the fruit of lips that thankfully acknowledge and confess and glorify his name. Hallelujah. Psalm 34 verse 1 says, I will bless the Lord. How many times? At all times. Say his praise shall continually be in my mouth. If you want your tongue to be full, be thankful. Be grateful to God. Someone said, joyful is not a matter of chance or circumstance. It is a matter of deciding to rejoice. And that's why Apostle Paul said, rejoice. Why I say, rejoice. So it's a matter of a decision you have made. You have decided not to rejoice. But the word of God for you this morning is rejoice. And in 2022, you shall rejoice. The fourth attitude is the attitude of a new you. Can somebody chorus it? One more time. Now say to yourself, the attitude of a new me. 
So as we are saying Happy New Year, also say Happy New Me. Glory be to God. Meaning that something needs to change in you and I. You can't continue to do some things same way and expect a different result. You want your partner to change? Who should change first? You. You want a change in result? Change your input. You want a change work environment? Also change your contribution. As you look forward to a new you and I, what must change in us? Number one, our attitude to life must change. We need to realize that we do not own life. It doesn't belong to you. No matter how rich, it doesn't belong to you. We need to understand that no man ever lives forever. Nobody. There was a rich man in this nation in the 70s. I was young then, but I could understand the music. And the musicians composed a song. And said to him, so, 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 person, you will never die. You will never die. Not long after that, something happened. Praise God. Yes. So we need to change our attitude to life. We need to understand that the life of a man does not consist in abundance of what he has. We need to understand that the race is not to the swifts. We need to understand that it's only time and chance that happen it. But I pray for you this year as you change your attitude to life, time and chance will fall for you in pleasant places. I say time and chance will favor you in the name of Jesus Christ. What should we change? Our attitude to walk. Luke chapter 16 verse 12 says, if you are not faithful in another man's work, no one will give you your own. If you are not faithful in something little, that job you say is little. If you are not faithful in it, your own that is big will not be given to you. So I'm charging every employee this morning as children of God, no matter how mega you think that income is, you work in that office because you need it. So and as long as you remain in that place, do it as unto the Lord. Don't allow other things to encroach on your employer's time. Don't cheat on your employers. As we also talk to em employers of labors as well, do it as on to God. Our attitude to work must change. What must change? Our attitude to others. Do unto others as you want them to do to you. Oh, they are not friendly. You be friendly first. Oh, they are not loving. You show love first. Your attitude to others must change. Your attitude to kingdom work. Your attitude to kingdom work. And this includes our giving attitude in the house of God. Permit me to say this. Or maybe I should not say it so that somebody will not take offense. Let's move forward. I will say it. What should change? Be positive. And constructive in your thinking. Between the 1st of January, today is 10th, uh, night, okay? And 9th of January. Can you remember those things you have said about Nigeria? This year alone, the year is just nine days old today. Those negative things you have said already. Uh, oh, Nigeria, eh, Bagbe, eh. 
Zina Nigeria you aunt. Forget about Nigeria you. Be positive. Say to your neighbor, be positive. And constructive. In your thinking. About Nigeria. About your children. About your spouse. About your family. About the church of God. Hallelujah. Second Kings chapter 4. Verse 22 to 26 is the story of the woman with a dead child. She left the ch dead child at home and everyone that encountered her, she said to them, it shall be well. She was positive and constructive. Be content, but not complacent. What must change in you? Be content, but not complacent. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6. Contentment is inner satisfaction with gratitude to God. You are saying to God, I thank you for everything you have done for me. I am content and I am not complaining, but I'm looking forward to a bigger one. That's contentment. Complacency is that satisfaction that you have to an annoying degree. Everybody knows that it is not right, but you don't see it that way. You have been carrying a certificate for 10, 15 years. You have not added to it. That is not contentment. It's complacency. You were employed into that job as a school cert holder for the t past 10 years. And that is the certificate you are still carrying up and down. It is not contentment. It is what? Complacency. Praise God. Praise the Lord. So be content, but not complacent. Lastly on that, have high expectations. Have high expectations. The expectations are so high. Because there is a peculiarity about this new year. Just yesterday, Daddy told us that the next time we have a year like this, we'll be in about, in over 900 years to come. That will be 3033. 2022, 3033. So if you will still be alive then, well, I don't know about you. Praise God, 3033. As a matter of fact, he said he wasn't sure whether there will be anybody alive because Jesus will have come. Praise God. So there is something peculiar about this year. Be expectant. Every new day, everything that you do, even when you come to church, be expectant. Don't come to church because if you do not come, somebody will ask after you. Don't come to church because you want to come and see somebody. Don't come to church because you want to socialize. Don't come to church because it is Sunday. Come to church because you have expectation. I've shared with us here, I must have shared it once, about one of our sisters who had her last baby then in UK. So there she was operated upon five times. They brought out the baby the first time. She was okay. The baby was okay. Her set was okay. But suddenly, certain things started creeping in. So they operated on her five times. So at the sixth time, they said, Madam, we have to open you up again. I said, well, I'm not going to wait for this. Release me. Let me go back to my country. So she came back to Nigeria. And one Sunday morning, like a Sunday morning like this, she said to God, I'm going to church. And all I need this morning is for me to be healed. Not minding what the preacher will say. It doesn't have to do with me. Whatever message the pastor is going to preach is none of my business. My business is to receive my healing today. Whether the, the message is related to me or not, I want to receive my healing. So she came to church. She didn't tell anybody. She sat just like everybody sits down this morning. And she went back home. She said at night, she started bleeding profusely. 
and she cried to God that I went to your house this morning to ask you for just one thing. And somehow she dozed off. By the time she woke up, it was as if she never went through that. And that was the end of it. Nobody operated on her. Nobody gave her pills to take. But she was expectant. She came to God's presence with expectation. So I'm challenging us. Every service that you attend, come with what? Come with expectation. But I had to talk to myself. Because it's like becoming a compulsion. And that's why I'm talking to those in the immediate constituency. Let's come to God's presence with expectation. Don't come because you want to serve. You want to serve, fine. But come because you want to receive of him. And I pray for you, nobody will go empty. Amen. You will not leave this church this year empty. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Have expectations in the new year. Expectation, they say, is the mother of manifestation. What you do not expect cannot manifest. And according to George Eliot, he said it is never too late to be what you might have been. Not minding your age. It is never too late to be what you might have been. Number five, attitude. I hope you got it. Number five, an attitude of God first. Have the attitude of what? God first. In everything that you do, put God first. I said it on the 31st of December. I don't know whether it was told in the Holy Communion. I said God has gone ahead of us. Oh, you just woke up this morning to the 9th of January. No, God has passed through all these days till the 31st of December. Even years ahead. He's gone ahead. So because he's gone ahead, where you want to get experience, who do you get experience from? For somebody who has gone through it before. So every day that you see, put God first. That he just said to us yesterday that there is a difference between professionalism and anointing. You may be a professional, whatever, maybe you are a banker, you are an accountant, whatever profession you may be involved in. When God is there, your case will be different. Oh, yes. When God is involved, your case, those that you are working together may have the same certificates like you. But because you are a child of God, your own story will be different. And your story will be different this year. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So I want to charge us as children of God. Let's endeavor to commune with God over big or small matters. Most importantly, have a relationship with God. Leave everything in his hand. I, 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 I went to a place recently and I shared with them the story of a man who had 13 apartments. He built 13 apartments. And he said to God, I thank you for giving me this property. And he went to bed. By the time he woke up in the morning, sorry, during the night, men of the underworld came. Those they met, they, they beat them black and blue. They ransacked the whole house. By the time he woke up in the morning, as usual, the woman in him started blaming God. After all, I gave you thanks for what you did for me. And God said to him, you only say thank you. You did not tell me to stay there. And I stay where you asked me to stay. I said, it's okay. I will take 12. God, please occupy one. He went to bed and said, God, this 12 belongs to me. This one, please, you can occupy. The same thing repeated itself. They ransacked all the 12, only the one that he asked God to stay, that was not told. I said, but God, you are part of this business. I asked you to stay in one room. Stay there and watch over the rest. And God said, it doesn't work that way. I said, it's okay, take two. On and on, until he said, God, take all the 13. And that was the end of the siege in his life. I wanted to give all to God this month, this, I mean this year. Release all. Your children that you have not seen with your eyes, release them into the hands of God. Your marriage, released into the hands of God. Your health, 
released on the hands of God. Your business puts everything in the hands of God. I love it the way the message version put it. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Can we have it on the screen? Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, the message. It says, don't fret or worry. Instead of worrying, do what? Pray. Let petitions and praises shape your worries into what? Into prayers. Letting God know your concerns. Praise ye the Lord. We are in the season of fasting effective Tuesday. I encourage you, bring everything to God. The sixth attitude, the attitude, attitude rather, of Elena. The attitude of Elena. Learn new things in this new year. Things that are related to your field. Things that are not related to your field. Go for the highest qualification in your field. Go back to school if you need to. Read, study, learning new things. Even on social media. Some of us are so used to WhatsApp because that's where you see all manner of things. Cock and boot stories that are never through, that can never be through. You don't know the origin, you begin to forward it. You have become an accessory. Go to the YouTube and learn new things. There's nothing you want to learn that you cannot learn on YouTube. Praise God. Use other social media platforms to enhance whatever you do. Learn new things. Number seven. The attitude... I think I need to share this testimony. I did not share it. Praise God. All right. Uh, my wife enrolled for a program some years back. And the way she was going, I felt I should do something about my own life too. <laughs> so I did. I enrolled in the school. My brother, <laughs> it was it easy. But there are times I have to call uh, the chartered accountants. They will come and meet me in the office and teach me, you know. And they will say maybe in the next uh, one hour you are going to do the exams. The longer and short of it at the time, at the point in time, I was like, no, I want to give up. But I remember that uh, I paid some money in pounds. I also remember my wife, that she was going to graduate. So how will you look like? In fact, Visaya was a daughter. She was also doing her master's. So I said, no, I won't be the odd one out. I tried. At the time, they wrote a letter to me that, well, you started this program for so long a time. Uh, we are going to give you this degree, a lower one, so you can just um, go like that. <laughs> I looked at this. Where is this coming from? If any of my children should come with this, will I pat them in the back? I said, no. I now wrote a letter to them that I'm a pastor. I also practice secularly. So the number of congregations is this figure. Uh, there are so many people, so many responsibilities. The only reason you will leave me at this stage is that if you want me to develop high blood prayer, and before you know it, if you continue like this, I will fall into depression. So they quickly wrote back to me that don't fall into depression. What I asked for was just one month. They said it will give you six months. To the glory of God, before the end of that six months, I completed the program. <laughs> Praise ye the Lord. Now the question is, what do I want to do with the certificate? Nothing. I just wanted to widen my horizon. I wanted to know what I did not know. Praise God. This is a new year. You can, you can determine. You are not a graduate. You can determine to become a graduate before the end of the year. There was somebody, not the end of the year anyway, at least you become an undergraduate within the next two, three years. There was somebody who was working in a government establishment. I won't mention the place. He came in as a school start holder. Nobody knew. Even the wife, the wife, he married, did not know. The wife assumed that she was a graduate. They had all their sons and, and daughters. They must have had about four. 
I think most of them graduated. But there was an issue. They had to lay off. So he was asked to go. So the amount they paid him was too small. And the wife was like, ah, somebody was a director in the ministry, in the federal ministry. I said, ah, how can they pay you this amount of money? The woman went to hire a lawyer to fight for the husband. She did not know that the man was a school sat holder. And the man did not confess. So at the end of it, I mean, you, your, your guess is as good as mine. When the man, the woman later discovered, she was disappointed that she's been living with a liar for 25 years or more. There were issues. Up to now, that issue, the issues are still there. Praise God. Just not because it, was, it wasn't an offense for him to be employed as a school sat holder. But it's an offense for you to remain on the same spot. You are not getting better. You are just in one place. What you think will not come may come. You may be doing well now in your own way. But what you think may never occur may occur. Get better and don't get bitter. Praise God. If you get bitter, you won't get bitter. The, woman is, the man is bitter. The woman is also bitter. Bitter times bitter. Bitter raised to power two. May God help them. Lastly, the attitude of yesterday is a spent check. Today is a valid check. Tomorrow is a post-dated check. This means that what has passed has passed. The check you presented in the bank on Friday should not be in your hand now. Is that correct? You presented a check yesterday and they gave you money. Is it still in your hand? If it's in your hand, uh, before you leave the premises, something will happen. Praise God. It's a spent check. The one you have is the one in your hand today. Make good use of today. Then tomorrow is yet to come. Don't be anxious. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 that we read earlier say, be anxious for nothing but with prayer, supplication and thanksgiving. Make your request known to God. Somebody said, and I would like to quote him, what lies behind us and what lies before us are tiny matters compared to what lies within us. I repeat, what lies behind us and what lies ahead of us are tiny matters compared to what lies within us. And I use First John chapter 4, verse 4 to support it. He said, greater is he that lives in me than he that lives in the world. As I conclude, success is not measured only in riches, but in fulfillment, in accomplishments, in impacting lives, and by doing the will of God. The key to success is to simply have a positive attitude. Your perception and explanation of yourself, people around you, and the entire world influences your results greatly. Everyone needs an attitude adjustment, particularly as we continue in this new year. According to the words of Steve Harvey, change your attitude and your altitude will change. A negative attitude is a pointer to the fact that life may be difficult and less fulfilling, but a positive attitude brings about a satisfactory result. It makes you a winner and not a loser. A positive attitude makes you a victor and not a victim. I officially and again welcome you to year 2022 where great things will happen in the name of Jesus. But I encourage you this morning, have a positive attitude. Glory be to God. All right, shall we rise to our feet as we pray? Let's rise to our feet. The first attitude I want us to display this morning is the attitude of gratitude. Just go ahead and say thank you to God. Thank you to God. Thank you to God. Thank you to Him. 
Psalm 8 verse 4 says, Who is man? That thou art mindful of him. Who is man? That thou visits him. Give him praise this morning. Say him you are grateful. For all that he did for you. Even those things you think he did not do. Thank him. Say Lord I thank you. 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 Maybe you are here this morning. You have not given your life to Christ. And you want to surrender all to him this morning. You need him. Oh, in all ways, you need God. I want to give you the opportunity. You want to give your life to Christ this morning. I want you to raise your right hand. Wherever you are hearing me. Raise it above your head. God bless those hands. God bless you, my brothers. God bless you, my sister. God bless you, my brother there. Those who are watching us online also, if you are releasing yourself to God this morning, I say God bless you as well. Can you please walk up to me here? Walk up to me. Those who raise their hand, please walk up to me here. Walk up to me. God bless you. God bless you, my brother. Please come. Please come. Please come. Come. Come and have an encounter with God this morning. Come and have an encounter with him. Those on the gallery, please come. Come wherever you are. Come and surrender all to him this morning. He is able to do beyond and above your thinking, above your requests, above your plans, above your visions. He is able to do exceedingly. And God bless you, my sister. God bless you, my brother. Please come. If you are coming, we are waiting for you. Come. God bless you as you come. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Brothers and sisters in the front, just go ahead and talk to God this morning. Ask him to have mercy on you. We have some prayer points. Can we please have them on the screen while we go ahead with those prayers? Our brothers and sisters in the front, pray to God this morning for forgiveness of sin. Please come. God bless you, my brothers. God bless you. The Lord bless you as you come. Come. Talk to God this morning. Ask him to forgive you of your sins. Tell him you want to align with him. Tell him you do not want to do anything without him. He's able to direct your path. He's able to lead you in the way that you should go. Thank you, everlasting Father. Glory and honor be unto your holy name. Blessed be your holy name. Now let's go ahead and pray the prayers on the screen. Just go ahead. I'll give you the next five minutes to pray those prayers. Show gratefulness to him. For all that he is to you. Tell him you are grateful. You are grateful for life. You are grateful that you are not alone. He is with you. That you are hearing me this morning is an indication that you are not alone. God is with you. God is with you. What a beautiful way to start the year. You are not alone. Thank you, Lord, that you are not alone. Thank you that I am not alone. Thank you that I am not alone. Pray to God to help you to adjust your attitude when necessary. Help me to adjust my attitude where necessary. Am I complaining about my wife? Help me to adjust my attitude. Am I complaining about my husband? Help me to adjust my attitude. Am I complaining about my work? Help me to adjust my attitude. Am I complaining about the people I work with? Help me to adjust my attitude where necessary. Help me to see the world within me positively. I said it earlier on that your attitude is the eyes of your soul. Help me to see the world within me positively. Even when everybody is seeing negative, let me see positive. That woman said, it shall be well. The next time Gehazi will ask her, I said, it is well. She confessed positively. Why don't you pray to your, for yourself this morning and declare positively that it is well with you. Body, soul, and spirit is well with you. Throughout year 2022, it is well with you. In the first quarter of year 2022, it is well with me. In the second quarter, it is well with me. In the third quarter, it is well with me. In the last quarter of the year, it is well with me. Body, soul, and spirit, it is well with me. Be positive. It is well with the works of my hand. It is well with my ministry. It is well with this child. It is well with Lagos Province 92. It is well. Talk to God this morning. As we remember every individual at home that may be under one siege or the other, let the siege be over. 
let the siege be over. Those under the siege of sickness, those under the siege of attack, let the siege be over in their lives. Let the siege be over in their, in, in their bodies. Let the siege be over in their families. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, let the siege be over. Let the siege be over. In the name of Jesus Christ. Pray to God in this year of doubles. Double my blessings. Double my testimonies. Oh, double my blessings. Double my testimonies. This is the year of the doubles. Double my blessings. Double my testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let's remember Nigeria and the entire world. That God in his infinite mercy. We put an end to COVID. And all his variants. All the variants of, of COVID. Let God put an end to it in Africa, in Asia, in North America, in South America, in Central America, in Europe, everywhere, everywhere, in Australia. Let God put an end to COVID and his, and his variants in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, everlasting Father. Glory and honor be unto your holy name. We give you praise, Abba Father. Thank you, Lord. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. So our Father and our God, we want to thank you this morning. We bless your holy name, Lord God, for your word that has come to us in its simplest form. All we need, Lord, let your word accomplish its purpose in our lives. Your word says to us that anyone who hears the word and doeth it not is like a man who behold himself in a mirror. And after some time, he has forgotten the manner of man he is. We are praying this morning, Lord God, for grace to do, release unto us. In the name of Jesus Christ, help us to adjust our attitudes where necessary. Attitude to life, attitude to others, attitude to kingdom things, attitude to our nation, Nigeria. Help us to adjust in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray for each and every one of us this morning. We shall be positive in our thinking. We shall be constructive in our confessions concerning this nation, concerning our lives, concerning our homes, concerning our families. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, you know where the shoe pinches us. And one beautiful thing about you is that your word says that we do not have a high priest that cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice this morning. Wherever the shoe pinches, you are the bomb in Gilead. Father, attend to everyone. Attend to everyone. Attend to everyone. Attend to everyone. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I pray for you. This year indeed shall be your year of double blessings, double testimonies, double lifting, double promotion. This year before you ask, heaven will answer you. I pray for you this morning that the heaven over you will be widely open. The ground under your feet will bring forth to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Everywhere you go sowing, you shall reap. Everywhere you go, labor, you shall reap. You will not labor for another man to harvest. You will not build for another man to inhabit. This year shall be a special year in your life, a special year in your family, a special year in your business. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, more than ever before, the Lord will be good to you. In this new year, money will mean money in your hands. Oh, currencies you have never touched before. You will not only touch it, you will spend it. You will receive it in the name of our Lord Jesus. I pray for this, your sons and daughters that have surrendered themselves unto you. Accept them, O Lord God. Beautify their lives. Decorate their lives. Be their father. Be their all in all. They have laid their hands upon the plow today. They will never look back. Thank you, Father, for answering our prayers. Glory and honor be unto your holy name. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Let somebody shout hallelujah. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Please look to your left. A minister is waiting for you there to receive you. God bless you as you go.
Thank you.